two. Track position was given up by the triple eight, but they're only 10 or a dozen cars back from the leader, and they've got brand new Pirelli rubber. Let's see if the safety car lights go off as they're halfway down the Conrod straight. The problem with that is they've got yes, they Andy, have. Andy Suchek in the Bentley to get through as well. So they're in the equation. Correct. Just in the back of this queue here. And what about Alex Imperatori in the Nissan? Weaving! Who's still weaving. weaving. Oh, that's an absolute nightmare for oh, the well. number 18 car. Imperatori's going to take himself out of it. Realising that it was too late. He's oh, still carrying on. No, he's going to get pinged for that. The safety car lights were well out. And he's not the first person to fall foul of it. Jake Dennis has got to get this restart perfectly timed and executed. Big deep breath, everybody. Pull down on the belts. Focus forward. Watch out for the Bentley coming through. No new tyres for Suchek, but a very fired up driver. What about Shane van Gisbergen as we go three wide across the line? The 760 very sportingly pulls out of the way and takes no part in what's going on. 62, Jake Dennis restarts, and it is a perfect restart from the triple nine in second place, down the 912. That's the Porsche of Matt Campbell. Chas Mostet just has to deal with a bit of traffic. He's through that now as well. Imperatori's going to be taken out of this for weaving, coming back to the green flag. To, well, the three of the best young stars in GT oh. racing. Oh, no, he's off and almost in the fence. Right, scratch the Nissan GTR out one way or another. Yeah. Move on, Bentley now in the game. So watch for Andy Suchek. The point I was going to make, three of the great young stars of Correct. global GT racing, one from the UK, one from Italy, one from Australia, all in their early 20s, making a massive shake of things in the front of this field. What's the Porsche got? Has it got enough to get past the big AMG and go after the Aston Martin? This has been an extraordinary restart for that car, though. Jake Dennis disappearing up the road. Safety car lights clearly out. Imbratori clearly weaving. <laughs> You'll be asked to come back into pit lane for that. And this was that big moment, tried to sail around the outside of Chas Boston. It's been done before, really on restarts though, with that amount of commitment required. Just shows how little grip there is now at Griffin's Bend. If you get it slightly offline, as uh, Imperatori was neck and neck with the BMW, but we are down now, I reckon, to six contenders at the head of the order. Matt Campbell's advantage, if he has one in the Porsche, is that the tyres on that car, although they've been on a long time, are probably in a slightly better condition than the car that he's hunting down because of the Porsche's very light use of the Pirelli rubber. I repeat, black flag, car number 18, pit lane penalty drive through. Scratch the Nissan, day done, they'll serve a drive through, they'll drop to the back of the lead lap. And that's their day done. They'll have to settle for what will probably be seventh position in this race. Different manufacturers in the top five positions. Aston Martin, AMG, Porsche, BMW, Bentley, the world's best. Different engines, different places for the engines. We've got a V12 leading from a V8, both in the front, then a flat six sitting behind the driver in the Porsche. This is building up to be an absolute pressure cougar of a finish to this year's Liquid Body Bathurst 12. That Porsche is punching out of slow corners extraordinarily well. Campbell just shows the nose to Raffaele Marcello on the run into turn two. It wasn't far enough to commit but it's a theoretical move. If he's good enough out of turn one, it might be enough to send it. To do what he did to Chad Boston, just get to a point where he goes, I'm gonna commit. Yeah. It's win it or not. <laughs> and Raffaele sliding oh, the car goodness. around. He's in real trouble on old tires. Remember, the Porsche has new Pirelli tires. The big Mercedes AMG does not. Yeah, newer tyres and a car that uses them less harshly. I think the back Pirellis are starting to give a little bit of grief to the man in the bright yellow car. Yeah, I fully agree with you. And Marciello hustling the Mercedes over the top of the mountain. What's his exit speed going to be like out of the bent? The elbow, though, I don't think he's going to have the traction compared to the Porsche. It's a newer tyre on the rear right corner of Matty Campbell's Porsche. But this is great news for Jake Dennis because every corner, every moment that Raffaele Marcello 
keeps those other cars behind, means they're not gaining on him. In fact, Dennis is going away. It's almost two seconds now. The gap between the Aston Martin and the chasing pack. And how about Andy Suchek on the back of that four-car chain? He would have thought his race was over. He could see a podium. He could see second place from here. Matt Campbell's tyres are 34 laps to the better of the car he's chasing, and it's about to make a difference. Triple nine has an error coming out of the cutting. He was out of the chase. He was sliding around. Campbell will go the long way. Has to be careful here because it opens him up to attack from Chaz Mostert behind. The lead is clear. This is the fight for second, third and fourth. 16 minutes left in a 12-hour motor race. Here goes Matt Campbell. He Had got to commit. Mostert. Got him. Campbell second. Porsche rejoice. The Aussie fans rejoice. Now he goes Aston Martin hunting. And that's Mostert. a Carrera Cup move. Absolutely classic. Mostert got through as well. Followed him through. Two pairs of cars making up positions. Campbell back to second. A race for such a long time that looked like it was in the back pocket of Alabama Motorsport. Went away from them because there wasn't a full course yellow. It's back with a chance for them because there has been one. The racing gods giveth. The racing gods take it away. Sometimes the racing gods giveth again. You have to earn the right, though, Creelsey, and they've been there or thereabouts all day. You can't begrudge any of these cars, drivers, or team combinations, or any of the manufacturers. You can't deny them a good goal at this win. Thank you. Review, Review post race. Nine one two. Oh the my goodness! So this is not all over yet. That was the battle down at the chase with the bump and run for Matt Campbell. Just find them. <laughs> Let the rest of you are not going to be happy. 1.9 seconds. Matt Campbell was five tenths quicker in the first sector. He was five tenths quicker in the second sector. He's reeling in the race leader. It won't be long before he's to the back of that absolutely brilliant Aston Martin that has just delighted us all weekend long. And Imperatore is going to have to pit this time for his drive through pending. That will spring Chaz Mostert with a brand new set of Pirellis. But I'm not sure, as we've been seeing all day, that the Triple Eight, the Vodafone car, has got the outright pace even in this last 15 minute dash. Raffaele Marciello is actually driving really well because that car doesn't want to turn, doesn't want to stop, and doesn't want to accelerate. Apart from that, it's great. A brilliant race car. Uh, I'm watching Andy Suchek now. I yeah. think Bentley's still very much a shot at a podium oh, here. Oh, come on! That's, again, the 42 moving around. Was that adequate defence or was it over the line? They've done that a lot because they haven't got the pork out of the corners. This is the best form of racing, isn't it? Up the hill goes the Bentley. Can't this is where this car 42. has been so good all weekend long. They've been passing cars with a band and all weekend. Is it a podium for Bentley? No. Or does he have to wait his time? Oh. Again, he goes wide. He's out on the turn. Imperatore comes through. He's Van Gisbergen. The side by side. Going up the hill. And Van Gisbergen goes through. Imperatore will have to pull out of this battle in a lap's time. I thought he would have come in this time around. So Van Gisbergen down to fifth. And that try for a position from Suchek has cost him two. Net one once the blue and white GTR gets pulled out to serve its penalty. 1.1 seconds. Matt Campbell takes three tenths out of Jake Dennis in the opening sector of this lap. 13 minutes to go. The race finish is the first car across the line, 14, uh, 17.43, so 5.43 p.m. plus, plus one lap. full lap. Yeah. Matty Campbell now with the leader. Here's the motor race for me. This is right here. He's got to get it done early before Van Gisbergen or any of the quicker cars can catch him through. Jake Dennis, well, he's done a great job this week. He's endeared himself to the hearts and minds of race fans, not just here at Mount Panorama, but around the world. And the Aston Martin being given a good go and its final major outing in this V12 form for the, the Vantage. 
there's so much emotion on the line. The lead Aston Martin going out with a bang. The Porsche, it's the last time for this Porsche and Earl Bamba's first time as a team owner. BMW in there as well. Chaz Mostit, and that would be emotional because of the loss of Schnitzer BMW's Charlie Lamb. Watch out for Campbell at the first corner. Is he going to go for a similar move? He's not quite close enough, and almost the car was moving around as if he was going to make a move into Maguire's. I thought you threw too far back, surely. One more lap, though, and Campbell will have a strong chance into either of those 90-degree left-handers. He's been driving this car like a Carrera Cup car at yes. the moment, on the nose. The thing pogoing as he gets on the brakes and the front splitter scraping on the ground. He's driving it so hard with a really aggressive turn in. How long before they hit traffic? That's my question. Everybody was packed up behind the AMG E63 safety car, but it will not be long at this pace before they start catching the back of the, script, the, the field again. Here comes Campbell, gets out of the Audi, cutting brilliantly well, but there's no real place to go through. That's Imperatory. Yeah. That's Imperatory. See, that's the 18 car. That's silly. They've cost themselves a top six position. Yeah. And they've been disqualified. They will be disqualified. So that car will be parked. It won't be classified. So for Nissan's hopes in the Intercontinental GT Challenge, it's a blow. Should have just taken the drive through and moved on with life and settled for a finish at the end there. Really frustrating for the team. Worst it could have been was seventh position Correct. because there's nobody else on the lead lap. Yep. Campbell down at the elbow. The Aston has to defend. This could be the critical moment in the motor race. Harrow exit out of the corner. Here we go. Ah, just relax, everybody, and breathe. I'm being absolutely sarcastic seeing that. There's no chance that that's going to happen in the next 11 minutes. The Aston, hey, it might not have the ultimate grip through the corners, but it still punches well above its weight down the main straight on Conrod, and also it climbs the hill pretty well. Doesn't have to be fast anywhere, just needs to be good so that Matt Campbell, sitting in behind, can't get the overlap. But we've seen already, gentlemen, Matt Campbell fighting for third, wasn't backwards and coming forwards. My goodness, if there's a race on the line, then he's likely to be just as uh, robust in his attack. Not close enough, I don't think, in the turn one, but Marciello's defending against Mostert. Mostert's very, very close behind us. This time it's the Porsche that goes slightly wide, trying to take the speed up Audi Mountain straight. Turn two's a chance, but his exit was compromised a bit because he got two wheels out in the dirt. So that affects his power down. Imperatory pits, by the way, their day done. Drive the car into the garage and go and hide somewhere, I would suggest, for a couple of hours in the Nissan team. Suchek is right back with Van Gisbergen after running wide, despite Van Gisbergen having the better tyres in the battle for fifth position. I think that Bentley is a slightly better platform at the moment, but at the front of the field is where it's all happening. Don't take your eyes off this one. We'll go right through the next nine minutes and 40 seconds till the chequered flag comes out. 5.43 and one lap. Do you know what? That one lap might be <laughs> the lap. lap. All the places the Porsche is strong, it's really difficult to overtake. And all the places the Aston strong are where the Porsche needs to overtake. Earl bamber has got all the fingers crossed. The Swiss team that lead the way from our motorsport looking nervous. I think it's safe to say from their pit bunker. It's all to play for. Australia's international in the enduro. No way. Is he going to get through there? He's going to have a look into the elbow. He's had the look. He's made it stick. There's a Porsche leading with nine minutes on the nose to go. I just had a feeling, even before he moved for it, that he was setting up. But here comes the Aston. That's not done. The Aston gets the tour. Goes to the right-hand side. Here comes the traffic. Oh, the... the uh, it was the McLaren, wasn't it, that was yep. in the way? But still, that means... Me the, the Manny Campbell has to defend into the chase. But I think he's got it done. I think that was the only chance that the Aston had to get it back. McLaren might have just won the race for Porsche because that was Jake Dennis's opportunity. Not done yet. Campbell defends, pushes the boundaries of what's acceptable and moving back across to cover your line. He's got one more go, Jake Dennis, because if they get to the top of the mount uh, mountain with the Porsche in front, I think it's gone. Can I just remind everybody 
there's an incident under review after yeah. the race for the 912 Porsche. So he needs to clear off because if he gets a time penalty, if he gets a time penalty, he may need the dif distance that he can make up. Earl Bamba, his name is on that Porsche. And Matt Campbell is within striking distance, within eight minutes now. Meantime, behind, here comes Suchek on Van Gisbergen, but he's not close enough. Must it? Suchek, Van Gisbergen, all closed in on Marciello. That's four cars fighting for the last step of the podium. And Jake Dennis, we'll see what sort of lap speed he's got if he can stay with it. Very wide in the Audi Sport cutting. He's throwing away time. And the more he does that, he'll drop back into the clutches. Here's the move. There was almost a Porsche which down the inside. There was no contact. And if there was, it was the lightest of light little touches. Here it is. Yep, little bit of a push, but there's nothing wrong with that. That's good, hard motor racing. Matt Campbell sails through, grabs the race lead, heads up driving both young men. The thing I liked about that was that there wasn't a hint of bump and run. No. I don't think he hit him in the rear. It no, was no. just a, a slight graze side to side, but Campbell was already in the position to overtake. Racing room, that is the definition of it. Credit as well, Jake Dennis here for the first time. He could have turned down on that. It probably would have ended both of their races, yeah. but he didn't. Fair play. Now, what sort of lead does Matty Campbell have to open up here? Oh, 10 seconds? I think, it's, I think it's 10 or 15 seconds. Oh, I think five at the least. Yeah. Well, the other thing though, how much is Jake Dennis taken out of the Pirellis on his car, fighting off a car that had much newer rubber on it? Because Marciano and that line of cars from third, fourth, fifth and sixth are closing him down. This could yet not even be a podium finish for the Aston Martin, with still probably four laps to go. Well, I'll tell you, this time around, Matt Campbell, 205.4, Jake Dennis, 207.0. He's 1.4 second, 1.6 seconds slower per lap at the moment. Look at Van Gisbergen going down the inside, turn one. That's a pass for position. He gets up He's the inside one. of Chaz Mostert. It's like a supercar race. Mostert's gonna come back at him. What a battle this is. And Final Sue spot on the podium, still up for grabs. Raffaele Marcello just in front. They're wheel to wheel here. The Bentley's gonna have a go. Andy Suchek will never say die and wants to keep himself in this race despite all that's gone on. But Shane Van Gisbergen goes through and after everything they've been through today, the team Vodafone car still a shot at a podium. Yeah, and he's got much newer tyres than the struggling Raffaele Marciello ahead of him. Marciello was struggling five laps ago. Uh, I'll tell you this, I don't know much about tyre technology, but they're not getting any better. It's not going to be helping him out. And here comes Van Gisbergen. There's a bright yellow triple nine car that's between him and a podium finish. What do you see happening here? Only one thing. Maximum attack from Van Gisbergen. Campbell's had a shocking first sector and he's lost a bit of time. Oh, and through! Oh. Oh, it goes the Van Gisbergen car trying to pass the Bat Marcus in front of them. It's all beginning to bundle up behind the triple nine down into the Bentley elbow. Thank goodness the 55. The little Janetta steers well out the rear, but Suchek's got a great run on the BMW. He's going to have a chance here. How hard, hard is Mostert going to defend? Mostert can still see a podium as well. All of these guys can see the final step on the podium, and they don't want to give it up. The final step on the podium is bright yellow, and it's flapping debris on the right and left-hand sides. And it's fast young Italian driver who's holding on for grim life at the moment to try and keep themselves on the podium at Mount Panorama. Van Gisbergen now will go the long way round at Maguire's turn. Square off the corner and get a better exit. Van Gisbergen's got the grip from the back and immediately into the defensive position by the triple nine. He's driving right down the middle of the road. Here comes Suchek again. I tell you what, Marciello, he's on the ragged edge here in every way, shape or form. He drops his left. Check that right rear Pirelli into the dirt. Suchek gets into the good run. Everybody's going to be fighting issues now. Van Gisbergen still in with the chance of the podium. Dennis trying to make some time back on Matt Campbell, who still leads. It's all still to play for. There still could be changes. Suchek suddenly off the pace after he ran wide. At destination, New South Wales, Griffin Bend, a couple of laps ago. I wonder if he's picked up a bit of debris on the Pirellis. It's going to be tight, this, as to whether this is the penultimate lap or the next one will be. 
so, so close, though, on the clock. And Mercedes-Benz AMG GT3 versus another one of Shane Van Gisbergen trying to get up the inside of Raffaele Marciello. But good straight line speed from the Italian, despite it being on very old Pirelli boots. Heading for the full commitment section of the mountain now, and Skyline in the distance. The 888 car ran wide into the dipper a lap ago. It's going to be much more controlled, I'm sure, from SVG. He's staying right behind the man's elbow. Elbow again. He's yeah. down the inside. That's the way to do it. The international drivers don't always cover the inside. Come in a bit late. No, he wasn't close enough that time around to pull off the Matty Campbell that we saw to take the lead of the race. What, three, four laps ago now. But again, he gets a good run on the similar car. Sule not able to put pressure on Mostert. Mostert not able to put pressure on... Uh, sorry, Suchek not able to put pressure on Mostert. Mostert not able to put pressure on Van Gisbergen. But Van Gisbergen has turned up the heat. Gas mark five. This is a great drive by Raffaele Marciello. He has not got the platform underneath him, and he is battling. He's holding on with his fingernails across the line. And it's not 17.43 yet. Now it is. <laughs> so there's going to be this one and one more Correct. for Matty Campbell. Two to go, two laps to go, just over 12k to decide the podium positions in the 2019 Liquid Molly Bathurst 12 hours. Manufacturers represented at the front, Legion, engines screaming, drivers sweating, and it's not all over. Bar the shouting by any stretch of the imagination, <laughs> here comes Suchek again. He's not done yet. Chaz Mostert under pressure. Does he commit hard this time and go round? No, he doesn't. Mostert was on the ideal line into Griffin's bend. No and grip on the outside of Destination New South Wales. As uh, Suchek has found out to his cost earlier on in the race. And just breathing room now for the group of M car of Raffaele Marciello because while Suchek's attacking Mostert, who's attacking Van Giesbergen, the yellow car just gets a breath to hold on to its position. It, it's struggling at all the points where it's very, very difficult to overtake. It's going to take a big move from Shane to get through. Uh, leading margin, by the way, three seconds now. Matt Campbell to Jake Dennis. Yeah, just pulling that out again. Jake Dennis, though, looking strong for the moment. In second place, Raffaele Marciello may have done the Aston Martin, the R Motorsport team, a big favour here in holding up the quicker cars behind, because I'm not sure what Jake Dennis had left in the locker to defend. And suddenly, Marciello has found a little extra pace, and it's Van Gisbergen who's struggling, maybe just a little bit. Mostert goes a little wide out of the elbow as well, and Suchek might be right up his tailpipes. This is brilliant. It's like a big game of risk where everybody's rolling the big numbers. Who's trying to hang on to Cap Chapka? Because you can never do that. <laughs> I agree. It's just amazing, isn't it? All these brands, 12 hours of motor racing, the longest green flag run in the history of the race. Smashed the distance records. Oh, by miles. It was 297. It'll end at, what, 312? Yeah. When they complete the final lap, which they're about to start, which Matt Campbell starts now for Porsche. Oh, contact between the AMGs. Van Gisbergen's going to run here. There's no worry down the inside. What about the outside at Hell Corner? And behind it, Suchek still throwing everything at the BMW. Here's the moment. Here's the moment for the final step on the podium. Shane Good out of turn one. Locked under the rear wing. Traffic ahead. Cars. Traffic ahead, Krilzy. That could play a part here. Going up to Griffin's Bend. Look ahead. And it's the... Jorgensen Strom BMW that could play a part here. It's very tight indeed. Mostert tries the wide line. Raffaele Marcello holds up the inside line. Great driving by the GT4 BMW to stay out of the way. Has not affected that battle for third. Brent Strom behind the wheel of that car, the second in class. Heads up driving. Didn't want to affect the motor race. Here's the Porsche at the top. The gap 3.7. Well, we know there's a post race investigation. For the moment, we can't factor that in. No. Because they're going to get the chequered flag first if we can bring it home the last half a lap. And the race that Porsche desperately wanted to add to their tally of every major endurance race the world has to offer, they're about to do it. And it's all down to the young Aussie who took a safety car opportunity and then fought and fought and managed to get through to the race lead. What a drive. The star of Australian motorsport. 
Matt Campbell is about to win this race for Porsche. It's an enormous moment the history of this brand, the story history, John Hindoff. Oh, Porsche have been in motor racing for all 71 of their years in existence. The original Porsche rolled out of the shop 70 years last year and immediately started to go racing to promote the brand. The 911, the longest serving Porsche model at the last race for this, this iteration of it, wins the 2019 Liquid Molly Bathurst 12 hours with a three and a half second gap coming to the line. Marshall oh, no. holds on just, I think, for third position, but by next to nothing from Van Gisbergen. Jake Dennis brings the Aston Martin home in its final outing as well. There will be lots of emotion. The Jake Dennis 62 car, remember, had the fastest time in the Pirelli shootout, but didn't get it because of infringements, but they've come home in second. 912 Porsche, 62 Aston Martin, triple nine AMG GT3. That's your top three. Shane Van Gisbergen missed the podium by two tenths of a second. <laughs> it was 12 wheel, hours. <laughs> wheel to wheel as a line. <laughs> oh, Crazy. what an extraordinary motor race. Again, we say it every year, but it just continues to deliver us something phenomenal every time. Well, you're never left wondering with what Shane Van Gisbergen, Shane's got to offer on the table. Shay. Earl Bamberg, critical part in Porsche's 17th and 19th overall victories at Le Mans. Your first big win as a team owner, and it's a race that Porsche had never won before. How badly did you want this? I mean, we wanted it better. You see the guys celebrating here. It was a crazy one month to be able to try and pull this off. I have to thank everyone in the team. I mean, Greg, my right-hand man, my brother. We work flat out, days and nights. I think I slept three hours every night this week, prepping everything. And these guys, this team is just a, a monster. And this is just the first one for us. Matty Campbell, incredible drive. I mean, amazing, didn't put a foot wrong. It was absolutely perfect. And that was a proper motor race. That was absolutely incredible nail biting. And we're gonna celebrate a lot tonight. You've earned it, congrats. Thank you. Absolutely. You say that you never left wondering with Shane Van Gisberg. And you could say the same with Matt Campbell. Oliver Hilger, the boss of Porsche Motorsport PR. They bring the full resources. They brought a cadre of European journalists out to cover their adventures here. Cruelly denied last year. They were convinced they were going to win the race. And Shane Van Gisbergen is out on his feet. He has thrown everything at this motor race and missed out on a podium by two tenths of a second. But Matt Campbell with his teammates Dirk Werner and Dennis Olsen for Porsche win the Liquamoli Bathurst 12 hour. After some incredible overtakes. Dennis, perfect record at the Bathurst 12 hour, your first time here and you got a win, but that was a pretty hard fought victory. Yeah, I mean, what a last in to Matt. I mean, what is that? I mean, it's incredible and uh, I'm so grateful from Earl, from the team. Dirk did a great job and uh, at the end of the day we are standing on top. My first experience, Matt has had a few more, but uh, what a great way to finish the last race for the Porsche GT3 R. Congrats. Thank you. Matt Campbell, congratulations, winner of the 2019 Liquid Molly Bathurst 12 hour. Let's call that the drive of your life. Yeah, I mean, thank you. I mean, uh, we went for a different strategy to the other guys and uh, fortunately paid off. We were very, very fast towards the end and uh, what a way to send off the old car. I mean, uh, perfect weekend. I can't thank Porsche enough. You seem so calm. How stressful was it out there? I mean, when the guy was saying I was in fifth position after the fit stop, I knew I had to push and uh, then the pressure really started to build. But uh, as we got a few more laps under our belt, we knew the car was fast and uh, yeah, we took off. The car was superb. Yeah, I mean, absolutely perfect. I mean, it wasn't so nice in the middle of the day, but for sure it came good at the end of the race, and for sure that was our plan as well, so it uh, worked perfectly. At what stage did you think you had the Aston Martin pegged? Um, well, obviously we were catching it so quick, so it's quick on a straight, so I just had to try and uh, do something different and make a move, and uh, fortunately I did that, and uh, yeah, got the win. Matt, finally, what does this mean to you and the team? I mean, it's absolutely phenomenal. I mean, it's the last race with this car before we go to new generation, and to send it off like this is phenomenal, and uh, to win at my home race, I mean, I can't thank, uh, thank the guys enough. Herb Oman Motorsport, it's their first race in GT and they've done it. Physically, Matt, the heat, the conditions today, how tough was it? 
Yeah, extraordinary. I mean, uh, especially at the start of the race, we had a cool suit failure, so it was quite hot then, but uh, we're able to still push on and uh, come through. Drive of a lifetime, Matt Campbell. Congratulations. Thank you. Drive of a lifetime indeed.